Yeah, I mean, I think clearly here, if we talk about today's and today's dollar value, because I am certain Bitcoin will go past $100,000 of Bitcoin in time <laughs> because of the, um, the dollars are being inflated away, right? So um, if we're talking today's dollars, I do believe that Bitcoin will achieve a price point of like a million dollars of Bitcoin in the very long term. Million dollars of Bitcoin isn't that crazy. Hey, welcome back everybody to Altcoin Daily. My name's Austin, joined by returning guest and friend of the channel, head of growth at Kraken Crypto Exchange, Dan Held. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, guys. Always love to be a part of the scene. Definitely, man. And we just saw you at Bitcoin 2022, the largest Bitcoin conference in existence. What do you think of the conference? Well, I believe, and I forget if it was Austin or Aaron, I forget who was with me when we were over hanging out with um, <laughs> Breed Love while I was chewing on a steak. Yes, yes, <laughs> I forget, forget which one of you I was with. It was me. It was me. I love that. Yeah. That, yeah. So uh, Breed Love, you know, Breed Love's a big dude and he had a, he had a steak in his hand, just a raw steak with no knife or fork. And he was just eating it you know, that he had brought to the conference because he didn't want to eat the conference food. <laughs> no, that's, you know, Bitcoiners are a quirky bunch. So you see kind of weird stuff like that. But I would say like that was more of the in the minority and most of it was like very polished, very professional. Um, 25,000 people is a lot of people for a conference. That's so like that's getting close to like CES and like major conference size. So it was cool to see how big it was. Like this community is super huge now, right? Like the in the expo room where all the crypto businesses are, you had like 100 different companies, you know, so like it was awesome to see the size of it. At the same time, I think it was a little bit too big where... I had to walk a lot, kind of felt like Vegas, where you have to like walk a lot between like the different Vegas um, casinos. I had to walk a lot and that dispersion of people made the energy a little bit more dispersed versus having that energy kind of kind of tighter where there's people hustling and bustling and that gives the room energy. So I think it was a little too spread out, but overall it was, it was probably the biggest Bitcoin conference or crypto conference I've ever been to. 100%. And many people were asking me, you know, when we came back is, so like what announcements happened there? Is this going to affect the crypto market or the, or the Bitcoin price? So just generally speaking, and we have sort of talked about this on the channel um, before, Jack Mahler's CEO of Strike made the biggest announcement that Strike is having a Shopify integration, meaning you are going to be able to walk in millions of storefronts across America and use Bitcoin, use the Lightning Network, to pay for coffee, whatever it is. That was the biggest, correct? It's the yeah. Shopify and it's the point of sale service. So it was two different things. The Shopify is anywhere online. And then the point of sale service was the biggest one in America or the world, apparently. So it's either face-to-face -face, in a store or online. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a huge medium of exchange sort of fan. I'm more of like Bitcoin as a gold 2.0 store values, like my thing. However, it's your Bitcoin. You can do whatever you want with it. So I, you know, admire, of course, admire what, uh, what uh, Jack has done. Um, also really admire anyone building on top of Bitcoin or building better ways to move it around. So huge fan of what he's doing. So like, I'm personally not, I don't think that's as big of an announcement because just because like a point of sale has Bitcoin that I could go spend there doesn't mean I want to. Um, you know, I'd rather hodl my Bitcoin and then spend my fiat when I have to and keep a minimal amount of fiat there. Um, but a lot of people live on the Bitcoin standard. So they need these point of sale terminals or they need the ability to go purchase things online. So I totally get it. Um, you know, for me, it's, it, it doesn't make sense, I think for 95% of Bitcoin's use case, but for the people who like live on a Bitcoin standard or just like to really do it just to be part of like the ecosystem, then I think it's pretty valuable. But, you know, like here's, a, here's an anecdote or like an anecdotal sort of story, you know, story with um, like Bitcoin payments and like tipping you know, the strike app is connected to like Twitter, right? So you get tips on Twitter mm -hmm. and I get like, uh, I got like a hundred tips in a day when it first started and now I get like one tip a week. So, you know, it, it was a hypothesized fun use case. And back in, back in 2015, I worked on this at change tip, change tip. We did micropayments over social media. So I'm a huge fan of the idea of like tipping and, and using Bitcoin for other things. But when it comes, when it comes to consumer behavior, I just don't think we've seen that translated really well into like, medium of exchange sort of like utility. Do you think, um, you know, that Lindy effect graph where, you know, the more Bitcoin gets battle tested, it's a uh, co collectible first, then store value, then medium of exchange, then full unit of account. Do you think in the 
you know, maybe a decade, decades from now, Bitcoin will be a medium of exchange? Yeah, absolutely. I think this is just part of Bitcoin's evolution. And in the beginning, you first have to hold it and own it in order to spend it. So naturally, we're going through the era of not many people have Bitcoin right now. Like more have had it now than ever before, but it's still not a very big percentage of the population. If we hit 50% or 60% of the population owning Bitcoin, Bitcoin's price starts to stabilize a little bit where, you know, Bitcoin in its final form will be boring. It'll be like gold. <laughs> you know, like my grandkids will be like, Grandpa, I don't want to hear about your Bitcoin. It's like the most boring thing out there because Bitcoin's supposed to be that risk-free asset, that safe haven asset, which means that when Bitcoin achieves that, you know, in 10, 10 to $100 trillion market cap, then it becomes boring. It becomes the thing you hold when you don't want to take risk. Um, so when that happens, you know, in that sort of era, I see Bitcoin, you know, it's more of like an S curve of adoption. You know, people use Bitcoin as a medium of exchange today, and they've used it more as a medium of exchange today than they have ever before. But relative to the store value use case, it hasn't gained much traction. But I think it is gaining small amounts of traction over time. It's not a binary moment. Um, and that S curve is when, like, for example, let's say there's a big lack of confidence in traditional financial institutions and in mass Bitcoin ownership goes from 10% to 40% of the population in six months. You know, then that S curve, we could see that S curve of medium of exchange adoption where all of a sudden people pour in and start using Bitcoin in that function because so many more people own it. So yeah, we could certainly see that, I think more of an S curve type adoption where you know a decade or two out is here and it's kind of slow and then there'll be kind of inflection point moments where Bitcoin moves closer to that store value plus medium of exchange era. Let's zoom in and talk about just Bitcoin in general for this year, 2022. Do you think we're going to need another quote unquote catalyst for Bitcoin to see its next leg up? And what could that be? That's a great question. So, you know, those who, for those who are watching, like a catalyst is like a, a newsworthy or macro event that, that spurs adoption or interest in Bitcoin. You know, I think that, you know, when we look at most of Bitcoin's adoption, it's mainly been price driven price increases, then the awareness of Bitcoin increases and more people buy in anticipation of more people buying Bitcoin rather than certain catalyst events occurring. And sometimes what happens is the price goes up and then people assign a catalyst event to, to the price rather than vice versa. Like the catalyst doesn't move the price. Um, like back in 2013, it was the Cyprus banking stuff. How many people in Cyprus were actually using Bitcoin? 10 people maybe, <laughs> you know, but that narrative was appended to price movement, which then was a, a reflexive sort of thing where it fed upon itself. So I think that, you know, Bitcoin has a very stable foundation right now. Like most people are like, okay, 41K dollar, you know, $41,000 of Bitcoin. All right. It's kind of boring, not bullish, not bearish. And so people are kind of like, this feels ish like a floor, but you know, you never know with how these play out, but it, feels like we've been in this sideways chop for a long time and the market's pretty comfortable around this area as like a stable base where I could see something where, you know, the price starts to increase, we get closer to 60 K. And then if there's a catalyst, then it might really start to push it forward and push it, you know, thrust it past that all time high point. But I think it's going to be a combination of like traditional market cycle. You know, if we look at, uh, if we look at the cycles and how they've elongated over time, End of 2022 is when some people predict that's actually when the bull should have occurred. So maybe this is a, just a precursor to get us up to like the 40K, 50K level, chop here for a good six months to a year, and then we move up higher later this year. But as you guys know, no one can predict the future. We can merely kind of describe what's going on now and what could happen. But uh, yeah, my, my bet would be we see you know all-time highs later this year. If... I mean, right now, there's so much uncertainty in the macro global landscape. If traditional markets, you know, tank or is they're so over leveraged if they hit a recession, are you worried about that? It's a great question. And that's where I see kind of like a binary outcome here. We could see um, we could see a lot of things happen. I mean, one, I think the situation in Ukraine might be resolved sooner than later. Um, also, I think markets are over overpricing what will happen there. I don't think this is going to destabilize the world economy to such a degree that it warrants like a recession. Um, also, I mean, they haven't banned gas from, from Russia, like the, the Germany and the rest of the UK, or the rest of the EU still use Russian gas, which is their biggest export. So, you know, things are still happening to where they haven't totally shut things off. Um, when we look at how the situation in Ukraine resolves, that's like a big macro event. We've got 
Um, inflation, of course, being probably the biggest narrative event where inflation is skyrocketing. The Fed can't raise rates because if they do, that starts to make all the lending more expensive. And so they're sort of in this rock and a hard place where if they don't raise rates, then basically we're inflating away um, our debt and there are negative real interest rates all across the board. Um, at the same time, if they raise it, they start to tighten the, they start to tighten their grip. They start to um, cool and what they want to like basically make the economy cool off a little bit because it's overheating and inflation's overheating. But if they do that, it could cause a recession. So <laughs> I see the Fed very, very gradually tight, tightening, tightening things up. Um, I think inflation, I think that there's no real way to combat this. And so that'll be really interesting to see how they fight it because um, if they tighten things up, you know, I think Bitcoin wins either way. Like if they don't tighten, inflation is skyrocketing and, and there's negative real returns all over the place. And where else are you going to park your money? Um, if they start to tighten, then it's clear that, uh, you know, Bitcoin potentially, if, it, if it's more of like a risk off safe haven asset, people start to flock to that narrative. Bitcoin's, Bitcoin's narrative is somewhat valuable depending on the circumstance. And that's where I think a lot of people might view it as risk on or risk off. But over the years, you guys have been and you've seen it flip, right? You've seen people be like, oh, Bitcoin's the risk on asset. So it's correlated with equities. And then all of a sudden it decouples. It decouples and then it's the risk off asset and people are realizing that. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of narrative um, is assigned but if Bitcoin starts to moon, it doesn't really matter. Then whatever happens in the macro world will just be correlated or people will point to Bitcoin and be like, Bitcoin moved because of that. Bitcoin kind of does its own thing as the TLDR of what I'm trying to say. Bitcoin kind of does its own thing. There are some macro catalysts, of course, like inflation and Russia are going to be the two big catalysts this year. That we're going to want to look at and see how those resolve. Um, but either way, I think Bitcoin's in a good spot. I'd love to get your thoughts on people building on Bitcoin with tokens. I feel because you work at Kraken and you maybe people talk about this stuff. Maybe you have alpha to share with, like, I think the blue chips are sovereign and stacks, but in general, what do you think about building on Bitcoin? Yeah, well, I can speak on my own personal behalf, not on the behalf of Kraken in terms of like what we're talking about internally, but on my own personal behalf, you know, I've checked out sovereign and stacks and I think they're awesome projects. Um, I'm more of a Bitcoin moderate these days where I love Bitcoin. I think it's the most important thing that we should be working on, the most important thing that we should be pushing forward. Solving the problem of money and governments, I think is the biggest problem facing us today. Now, with NFTs and Web3, that stuff is interesting and cool. And there's really cool incentive models that they use with tokens. Um, so, you know, like when you look at how AMMs function, like automated market making, you know, oftentimes these AMMs, or these liquidity pools will, they'll promote liquidity by giving them some of the governance tokens, right? So I certainly think those incentives, like using tokens as incentives are very interesting. Um, TBD on long-term value accrual, you know, because it's a hypothesis that these incentive tokens and governance slash governance tokens can ultimately accrue value and represent some form of quasi equity, right? So I think that's still like an experiment that's a little bit of TBD. Um, we still, I mean, it is still a hypothesis that gas tokens are a thing that value will accrue to a platform just because of the utility of its token being used as gas. Um, so Stacks and Ethereum have that same sort of, and, and um, Solana and the smart contract platforms have that as their thesis, right? But if, you know, if that was the case too, then, then why was all of Ethereum's price appreciation and, and, and rise and fall almost 100% correlated with Bitcoin? Why didn't it decouple and have its own sort of price and speculation based off of that massive underlying utility, which was their hypothesis of NFTs and, uh, and other things. So I think that these are still, it's still a hypothesis that, you know, tokens can be utilized to go accrue value for XYZ use case, but I think it's worth experimenting on and worth checking out. And so I think Stacks and Sovereign do a really interesting job of trying to tie some of their function back to Bitcoin. And so, you know, Sovereign runs on RSK, which is really cool because RSK is one of the oldest like smart contract platforms of Bitcoin. And then Stacks yeah, connects to Bitcoin a couple different ways. One of the ways is kind of using Bitcoin's proof of work or recycling Bitcoin's proof of work for their own system. And, and they, um, what's really interesting about that is they anchor some of the security model into Bitcoin. And then as well, if, you, if you're stacking with the Stacks token, you earn a Bitcoin yield, which is a new financial primitive that is very interesting, right? Because it throws off a Bitcoin yield. So... Uh, you could have, for example, a loan could pay for itself because if you post the stacks as collateral and the uh, lender 
would simply pay off the interest that you owe with by stacking stacks. So there's some really interesting kind of like um, primitives that, you know, I think across the eco crypto ecosystem, you see them in all sorts of different platforms. For me, I love Bitcoin the most. So seeing those primitives and these new, uh, I know hypothesis for a token value for that to be built on top of Bitcoin, I think is very interesting. Dan, final question, um, just sort of in summation, because we talked about, you know, the bull case for Bitcoin this year, based on either the Fed's actions or inactions, the bull case would be surpassing all-time highs. Looking maybe a decade down the line or just to 2030, what is the bull case if Bitcoiners are right? Yeah, I mean, I think clearly here, if we talk about today's and today's dollar value, because I am certain Bitcoin will go past $100,000 of Bitcoin in time <laughs> because of the, uh, the dollars are being inflated away, right? So um, if we're talking today's dollars, I do believe that Bitcoin will achieve a price point of like a million dollars of Bitcoin in the very long term. Million dollars of Bitcoin isn't that crazy. Um, when we look at global money, we look at all the money in the world, what's that worth? When we look at gold, what's all the gold in the world worth? And when we look at other store value assets like real estate and sovereign debt, Bitcoin achieving a million dollars of Bitcoin is a very achievable market capitalization. So a million dollars of Bitcoin uh, is the per unit cost. But uh, when we look at, and I believe um, 20 trillion is a, a million dollars of Bitcoin. So that'd be, I believe that's how much that is. Um, it's 21 million times, <laughs> times a million. Uh, so yeah, I think that's, that's around 20 trillion. So, you know, I think Bitcoin will achieve that price point in the next 10 years. That's a very long time. There's, I don't see any headwinds where like governments aren't going to become, <laughs> they're not going to become prudent and cut budgets. They're not going to, they're not going to slice deficits. We're not going to become more trusting of our government. <laughs> I really only see this going one direction and that direction I think points to Bitcoin. And I think that more and more people will believe that that is the direction they should go where you shouldn't trust your government with your money. You should trust Bitcoin instead. And we've seen that trend only go one direction for the last 10 years. And I think we'd be remiss not to look at the next 10 and, and think the same thing. Dan Held, love the perspective. The links for Dan are down below in the video description. Check them out. But final thoughts for the YouTube audience. Well, look, there's a lot of different things out there to be excited about. I know a lot of people, you came into the space because you liked art or NFTs, or maybe you tried out some other tokens and staking. Those are all cool and fun. You know, go check those out. Definitely recommend though that you start or at least begin your journey understanding Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the OG crypto, and there's a lot to understand there and a lot to unpack as to why Bitcoin is valuable, why that problem that it's solving matters, and then also it'll help you evaluate other chains because typically chains will trade off decentralization for more fun stuff. <laughs> it's kind of the TLDR. And that's not necessarily bad or good, but you should know what they're trading off. And so getting a good foundational understanding of Bitcoin is a good spot to start. So I know you've probably had a lot of fun doing other things, but go check out Bitcoin. I know it sounds a little bit old, it's just money, but there's actually a lot to it and it's super interesting. I like it. it. Thanks so much for coming on, Dan. Thanks guys, always appreciate it, cheers.